June Collier burst onto the scene as a star at the end of the silent era, but by the late 1930s, she was more or less retired. Why? Join me as I investigate. June Collier was born as Dorothea Hermance in 1906 in New York to Clayton and Carrie Hermance. Clayton was an attorney, and her maternal grandfather was the stage actor Dan Collier, active on Broadway for many, many years. Her younger brother was Bud Collier, who would later become a famous voice actor and TV host. There's not a lot of information out there about her childhood, but we do know that, as a young woman, she was a debutante and interested in acting. She, and later her brother, took their actor grandfather's surname, and she changed her first name to June and made her film debut in the ensemble of 1927's Broadway Nights. According to an article in Moving Picture World, June was hand-selected by director Alan Dwan to star in his 1927 New York film East Side, West Side at Fox, appearing as the wealthy Josephine, starring alongside George O'Brien, Virginia Valley, and Holmes Herbert. Motion Picture News said that she is lovely enough to go far in pictures. June was signed to Fox and quickly made her second starring picture there, Woman Wise, which was released in early 1928. Motion Picture News praised her again and stated that June Collier has reserve and natural charm. She then starred alongside James Hall, Francis X. Bushman Jr., and Margaret Mann in the hugely successful World War I drama Four Sons, which was one of the biggest hits of 1928. She then co-starred with Larry Kent and Victor McLaughlin in the Irish drama Hangman's House, which got her raves from Variety. June's first year as a star in the movies was so impressive that she was soon named a Wampus Baby Star of 1928, alongside Sue Carroll, Anne Christie, and Lena Basquette. Later that year, she starred in her first two star vehicles, both of which had synchronized sound on film from Fox Movie Tone Technology, Me Gangster, and Red Wine, which Motion Picture News noted that June was lovely as usual and given more chances to exhibit her considerable talent than in her previous films. In 1929, June made her full talkie debut on loan to Paramount in The Love Doctor with Richard Dix before making her starring talkie debut back at Fox and Not Quite Decent with Louise Dresser. The New York Times gave her raves for her performance. As successful as her starring start in The Talkies was, Fox seems to have not known what to do with June for the rest of 1929 going into 1930. Her next few roles saw her still featured but supporting other stars like Mary Bryan and Nancy Carroll. After starring opposite Louise Dresser in The Three Sisters in 1930, June left Fox. I'm not sure whether it was her choice or not, but according to Photoplay, she was now under contract as a Paramount star by May of 1930. Perhaps she was unsatisfied with her roles at Fox and chose to move on when her contract came up for renewal. At Paramount later that year, June was back to starring in her pictures. Her first was opposite Gary Cooper in A Man from Wyoming, a beautiful World War I drama that appears to have been a commercial hit and got both stars good notices in the New York Times. But despite what Photoplay had said, Man from Wyoming was June's only film at Paramount. It looks like she began to freelance after its release and then moved to Tiffany to star in Extravagance as a wealthy woman that marries a man of a lesser class, leading to many complicated situations. She then starred alongside Charlie Ruggles and Charlie's aunt at Columbia. In 1931, June freelanced and starred or co-starred in six films. Highlights included the horror drama The Drums of Jeopardy, in which she appeared alongside Lloyd Hughes and Warner Oland, Alexander Hamilton, in which she starred alongside the legendary George Arliss, and Dude Ranch, a fun Western comedy in which she starred alongside Jack Oakey and Stuart Irwin, with whom she fell in love and got married that year. June then took a year off from the movies to give birth to their son, Stuart Irwin Jr. Returning to work in 1933, June found herself working exclusively at smaller Poverty Row studios, but still starred in all of her films over the next few years, giving her usual high level of excellent performances. In 1933, she played a murder suspect alongside Betty Blythe and Detective Ralph Bellamy in Before Midnight. Variety praised her performance in the film, but wanted to see more of her. In 1934, she starred as a woman that comes between two pilots and lost in the stratosphere before starring with John Miljohn in the horror comedy The Ghost Walks. 
Making an impression as a horror heroine, June made two more similar films following The Ghost Walks, including a, the Bela Lugosi cult classic Murder by Television in 1935, and the spooky A Face in the Fog in 1936, in which she plays a reporter out to get and later stalked by a killer known as The Fiend. After making two more brief appearances as herself in two shorts, June decided to retire. She appears to have wanted to enjoy her time raising her son and now subsequent daughter, while her husband continued to star in numerous films. In 1950, Stuart Irwin was given the opportunity to star in a new sitcom on a relatively new medium, television, and decided he wanted his wife to star alongside him. The result was The Stu Irwin Show, aka Trouble with Father, which aired on ABC from 1950 to 1955 and saw June star as June Irwin, the wife of a comical high school principal played by Stuart, who often has to be the voice of reason in many humorous situations. Following the end of the series, June made one more TV appearance before retiring for good in 1958. She seems to have spent the rest of her life in quiet retirement. Stuart Irwin sadly, I'm sorry, continued to act in film and television before suffering a sadly fatal heart attack in December of 1967. June, suffering from pneumonia, passed away just a few months later in March of 1968 at the age of 61. The couple were, re were reunited in a lovely resting place at the Chapel of the Pines in Los Angeles. So we are left with the question, why did June Collier's career stardom and the talkies falter after such an impressive start? Well, I think Fox unfortunately mismanaged her career, which isn't surprising considering that William Fox was going through many financial and legal troubles after the stock market crash in 1929 and the studio remained in turmoil. Not seeing the talent they had on their hands, studio heads demoted her to supporting roles and June, probably frustrated, left Fox for Paramount and then began to freelance. However, even when June was headlining Poverty Row production, she still exhibited the same level of talent and professionalism that had impressed Alan Juan all those years before. Content to enjoy her life as a wife and mother, June retired before becoming immortalized as one of the earliest classic TV moms, proving that even after 15 years away from the limelight, she was still one of the greats. Here's to you, June. Please like and subscribe or follow this account if you want to learn more about the history of silent film stars who starred and lasted only briefly in the talkies. Up next, Join me as I cover the silent talkie career of Virginia Lee Corbin. Thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy your week.